What's up, everybody? Hope you're doing good. Want to thank you for joining the show. This is the very first We Don't Have Cookies live stream. We're going to have fun today. It's a stacked show. YouTube legend Frankie McDonald will be here to run down this week's weather and play a game. There's also maybe a surprise or two, but I doubt it. Uh, I will be giving away a copy of my first guest book at the end of the show, so make sure you stick around. We're going to be talking about that here in just a second. Speaking of my first guest, let's get right to it. You may have heard of him or seen him on the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve, or you may have seen him from clips from his YouTube channel. I uh, believe that is Flat Earth Clues, with close to 100,000 subscribers with 20 million views, the poster child of the Flat Earth movement, the one and thank God the only, Mark Sargent. Wow. Doing? that Thank you. That was a wonderful intro. And I'm sorry I don't have the lights on me right now, so my, my light's a little flat. I could put lights on me, but then it's going to get all weird. <laughs> so We're just starting off with flat puns already. Yeah, the unintentionally. Uh, I, yeah, that was unintentional. Actually, uh, I was looking. I was. I was thinking. <laughs> wow, the the first time I I I talked to you was back in August of 2020, and then we did one in January of 2021, yeah. and here we are in April of 22. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's always a pleasure to talk to you. You're always a really good guy. So nah, glad to have I you back. Know. That's that's rumor and hearsay. <laughs> rumor and innuendo, huh? <laughs> yep. Spread by I my think, competitors. I remember the first time you were on the show, I had a uh, a really hard time pronouncing your first name. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it took. I think it, that was the first three minutes of the show. Wow! Really? <laughs> really? Well, so the the new yeah. the New Testament doesn't do anything for you? You know, screw those no. those first four books. <laughs> They're all really tongue twisters, are they? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. <laughs> what the others like, uh, I know I'm going to screw them up. Something like Joan and luck or something. I, I don't know, man. I can't pronounce biblical names. Matt. But, uh, <laughs> that's weird. That sounds European. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> well, <laughs> one of the things I wanted to ask you about is yeah. that, um, oh, and by the way, I don't want you to feel like this is a setup, but when I announced that you would be on the show, Mm -hmm. I was contacted by an expert who said that they want to come on to prove you wrong. Uh, they want to come in in-house, so hopefully they'll be here before the show's over. Um, and and we'll you're not going to tell me this person's name? Uh, well, as you know, I'm bad with names, but I do know his first name is Alfred. So we'll have him introduce himself. He's uh, from Germany, I, I hear. So okay. it may take him a while to get here. All right. But... Um, one thing I wanted to ask you about, mm -hmm. everybody can see you on the screen. Yep. So being in the flat earth community and in the conspiracy theory community, right? do you find it hard to be one of the handfuls of hunks in that community? Hunks as in, well, you know what, but uh, before, before we go, like further, them I, off I don't want to type punk type type thing. Well, I, I know that with the way things are today that uh calling you a hunk is <laughs> probably <laughs> bad it's not the first PC it's term extremely I, flattering considering <laughs> considering my age but, but thank but you. I, I think the, thank you for that i think the pc term is beefcake oh my uh, god so oh how god. do you how do you I, deal I with have, that by the way i have gained a, quite a bit more muscle mass since the documentary you know the documentary was um uh, it was shot in 2017, so that's five years ago now. Wow. Yeah, I know. In fact, it's already completed its run on Netflix. I mean, it went the distance. You know, it, it had a three-year contract with with Netflix and and just got pulled off, I think, 30, 45 days ago. Okay. Yeah. It was a really good did. documentary. Thank you. It did very, very well. I did not produce it or have anything really to do with it other than I was in it. I was the protagonist in it. Uh, and they, the, the producers and the directors had no faith in all at all in the project whatsoever. They were just kind of doing it as a side thing and never thought it would get in a, in a film festivals, never thought it would get purchased by Netflix or iTunes or anybody else. So, wow. So, yeah. 
walk me through that because that seems very odd that they would put the time into it because they There's interviewed quite a few people. A lot of times films get made just to be put on a resume. It's it's kind of like going to, what it, it's nothing I can really even compare it to. Only that the there's like for example there are thousands of films made every year that you will never ever see because they cannot get into distribution because no one wants to pick them up. So a perfect example would be we we made this film in 2017 and we apply or they applied to the uh, the one of the first film festivals they went to was the big Toronto Film Festival up in up in Canada. And there were a great example of this would be there were 3000 films submitted to that film festival, 3000. Wow. And out of those, the film festival could only choose 100 to screen out of those only 10 really draw attention, you know, you know, get get people pumped up. And out of those, maybe three, maybe get purchased. You know, even if they win an award, there's no guarantee that, that they're going to get purchased. And then, and so, so again, the, I had, I don't blame them all. The, the producer and the directors. Yeah. Why would you have faith? There's a 99% chance your film is not going to do yeah, that's anything. True. They, that's why film people say, you know, why there's so many sequels made to movies. And that's because when it comes to Hollywood, especially it is lightning in a bottle. And once you catch it, you're going to milk it for everything it's worth. If you can that's why people they love you know the actors don't like doing sequels necessarily i mean it's a good payday but you know actors want to do their creative thing and it's like i want another project i don't want to do nine fast and furious movies and stuff like that and and so there's 99 percent chance that it was it was going to fail and when it got when it did as well as it did in the in, in the toronto film festival it, every every fe festival they submitted it to they got in and then to where they even sent me out to a film festival and you know to to be a representative even though they hated flatter just hated it and then um uh it was picked up immediately you know they're saying oh it could take two years to get purchased even if it does and that was not the case uh but to tell you how bad they did not like us at the end uh, because nobody that made the film had any you know nobody got converted that made that film i mean they were staunch anti-conspiracy all the way uh the this there was no there wasn't even a discussion about a sequel they were like nope we don't want to have anything to do with this and so wow. they just yeah they never never touched it again it's like all right it's fine what would the sequel be called out of curiosity um well we we already know uh if we were going to do it it would be called beyond the curve instead of behind oh, okay the curve. so i like uh, that that would, that would have been the easy one to do and uh it would have been it would have been fun to do a follow-up on that but eh yeah. again it's again it's, it's the entertainment industry and and it did it did as well as it did because they hated it because they <laughs> didn't it, seriously because no it, I, I get you because there's would, a lot of that out there it would have come off as a propaganda piece the good documentaries come off as a back and forth back and forth so yeah because i sat with some of these audiences and is like you know, they're like oh well, there's a lot of flatter things happening oh, okay good. there's a scientist on screen i don't have to panic now oh there's more flatter oh no, there's an astronaut i know him i know him he's really good and and it was like this you know it was you know build up build up and then scientists build up build up psychologists build up build up and so by the end of the movie they were just going back and forth uh but what i like to tell people or remind people is that for for a lot of the audience the first 20 30 minutes if you don't know anything about flat earth you didn't they didn't think it was a real movie they didn't think it was a documentary they thought it was a piece what's known as a docu fiction where oh, okay. everybody plays it straight like a, 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 a mockumentary a mo kind of kind of kind of like a mockumentary but it wasn't mocking it over the top like some of those that this was docu fictions are very very rare which is why they're tough to pull off because you don't know if they're serious or not um i don't remember don't remember telling you this but they showed the 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 cut the the rough cut of the movie to an editor out in los angeles didn't give him any context whatsoever it was so great he comes back at him and he goes what he goes what sort of budget did you have for this movie he goes, i thought this was just a shoestring type deal and and they said what are you talking about they go he goes all those actors they played it absolutely <laughs> straight and they were really they, good and, and and they had to come back it's like no man there were no actors that's all real. And, and he just freaked. He's going, wait, 
that conference that happened <laughs> it's like yeah man we were there for three days and and yeah wow. which is why why all the media went nuts too i mean the, the media sent down the media sends scout teams to stuff like that like they'll they'll send like one or two people to walk around and see if it's legit before they send out a full-blown camera crew and i saw these guys you know the, you can tell it's like as soon as they walked in they're like they just picked up their cell phone. It's like, yeah, you got to send somebody down here. Like, right now, <laughs> something weird is happening. I don't even know what I'm looking at here. And so the the next the second day of the conference, that's when all the media showed up. I mean, from everywhere. They came in from overseas. They were all over that place. Really? I was wearing, I was wearing three hot mics simultaneously. And to this day, I can't even tell you who I was hot mic to. <laughs> Meaning, I, I don't know oh. if it was foreign press or local press. I mean, Howard Stern sent a team, for example. You know, every everybody from French to Middle Eastern to Australian. I uh, I could I I didn't even I don't think I watched even thirty minutes of of all the present the presenters because I was constantly being dragged into small rooms, you know, and mic'd up and it's like, okay, let's let's tell us what's going on here. Are you all insane? <laughs> It's like, yes, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> we, in fact, it was a mental institution that just exploded one day and the survivors limped over to this hotel and we started our own conference. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Anyway. Well, everybody, I have a special treat for you. This wasn't announced, but he is mm -hmm. part of the We Don't Have Cookies family and one of the podcast listeners' favorite people. It's John the Songman. How you doing, Johnny? Oh, great seeing face-to-face -face and just... So Same you know, here. Mark. Just so you know, you're on the air. Just so you are aware, because I know you got tons of stuff to share. Because I know with Alt James, you're much better to him than a teddy bear. Because you always <laughs> are always the man. That's always the mayor. Wow. <laughs> I should break out. I should break out two tur turntables and a microphone just to the whole wicka 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 wicka. <laughs> Nice. I like that though. You're the mayor of the flat Earth community. I think we I just listened you a new that name. name. That was a that was taken directly from uh, the Truman Show, because I made this one reference point to the Truman Show, which they they ran with, and I was really surprised. And I only talked about it once, which was we you know the Truman Show with Jim Carrey from 1998 or nine, nine, eight, 98 or 99, I think it was 98, and where you know Truman left at the end of the movie. You know, once he figured out where he was, you know, when he got to that door at the edge of the world, he's like, he's gone, he's leaving. Mm -hmm. And what I tried to, what I tried to remind people is like, yeah, because Truman was just a, a cog in the machine, right? But what if, you know, what if there were a lot more people that were being fooled, right? What if you were the mayor of the Truman show, right? And you didn't know what was going on. If you got to the edge of the world, well, you're giving a lot of stuff up. You're giving you're giving a whole bunch up. Will you still go out that door, give up that cush life for the unknown? Jim, you know, Jim Carrey, Truman had nothing to lose, but a mayor or someone, you know, high profile figure, they might just stay or and keep the secret. And that's yeah. when they came over and said, Well, aren't you the mayor of Flat Earth? And it's like, which means that even if I found out the world wasn't flat, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't tell people. It's like, no, no, that's not me. You just gave me the title. But that's what that that's how they portrayed it at the end of the movie. I was like, I get you. I see what you're doing, which is fine. But no, I'd, I'd absolutely no. I it's the challenge I put. No, I don't like doing this. No, <laughs> no, one, I didn't get into flat earth to be famous. People's like, oh, you were in it, you know, to, to get famous is like flat earth is a terrible idea <laughs> to get, try to get <laughs> famous for. It's horrible. I mean, the odds are so stacked against you. That is uh, true. So, no, if it, I, in fact, that's why I put out my my phone number, my physical address, and my email address, and everything. I said, look. Please, somebody shut this thing down so I can I can get back to my normal life, so, so I can go back to the Matrix. And it turned out to be the opposite. So, anyway. You got a question for Mark, John? Oh, yeah. Well, I can ask a question. Like, what would you say would be the highlight of 22 for you if this does come around for a good goal for you? 22 this year? Yeah. Um, My goal this year provided – you know, we don't get embroiled in, in some international epic, you know, Lord of the Rings story. Yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to be light when I say that. <laughs> uh, is um, is to actually go to the uh, the conference in, uh, we've got a Flat Earth conference in the Carolinas in October. 
Oh, okay. Called, called, called Flattoberfest. And I did not go last year because of the whole lockdown situation. I thought the whole flight situation was ridiculous. And so I did not go. Um, but from what I understand, the, the U.S. government's going to repeal the federal mandates here in a couple of weeks. And if that's the case, then yeah, yeah, I may go. So that's that's why I want to do it because it was, I mean, i give you a quick example. In 2019, I did conferences in seven countries. Yep. Um, I did a, a commercial in Australia. I, you know, did a conference in New Zealand. That was a blast. I did talk shows in London. Could could our community could do no wrong in 2019. And then at the beginning of 2020, I, I kid you not, it was getting so nuts that London called me back and they said, yeah, 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 you got to fly back out here because we uh, we celebrate something called Pancake Day in the UK. Yeah. It's like, okay. Uh, and McDonald's says, yeah, we're going to do a Pancake Day and we're going to, we need you to do a commercial because, you know, pancakes are flat and they're round. I'm going, I'm all for it. Let's do that. <laughs> oh, sure. yeah. And um, the passports are ready. And then the next thing you know, the border, all the borders closed because of, <laughs> oh, because of the lockdowns. It's like, damn it. Yeah. And it did not and it did not get any better after that. I mean, our big conference in Vegas was canceled. You know, we, we couldn't find any venues. And uh, I mean, the online community, you know, we kept plugging away and doing our stuff. You know, I never stopped doing that. But the the meetups really shrunk for a while. Only now have we gotten back to meetups. You know, I think there's. Uh, the, this month alone, I think there's like a dozen different meetups in, in different states. So that's fun. Yeah, that's incredible that you almost got to do a McDonald's commercial. Um, yeah, yeah. And that, it oh would have been. Cle- I, I would have caught in some hell for it. And I mean, I caught hell for the uh, the mobile commercial down in Melbourne. But at the same time, I try to remind people, I'm going, look, I don't care as long as I get to say flat earth on camera. I go, you can right. sit me down in a chair and just throw pies at me. <laughs> for 30 seconds that's <laughs> fine i'll be like flatter black, black, black. you know I, i'll do that uh so you know no doing a dumb pancake commercial i'm gonna remember the the campaign for the the mobile commercial was called um foolproof right okay. meaning if if guys like mark can get figure out our app then you can too <laughs> and it's like, i oh, thought it had some. I thought I had something to do with like a flat rate or something like that. No, no. It's a, Australia is um, uh, the, online gambling is completely legal there. And so, as you can imagine, there's a big online gambling problem <laughs> because it's completely <laughs> legal. And so there are these big companies and you know, a couple of them put put apps on their phone, you know, where you, Heck, you don't even have to come down to the track. You can just do it from your phone. And I'll be darned if we didn't go to a horse track that was in the off season and we shot the commercial in the lobby. <laughs> they converted the lobby into this in this thing. So it was kind of fun. But uh, no, I don't I don't mind any of that stuff. The only thing. But at one point during the, the shoot, they said, hey, would you would you mind saying that the world isn't flat on camera? And I said, no. <laughs> it is not in my contract but here one more thing um and again people don't don't understand the weird thing about production you know nothing is real on television nothing yeah. and they I, I remember i was there and there were american people walking in front of me like a the a beauty queen from south carolina i'm going wow you got a beauty queen from south carolina there it's like no mate <laughs> she's australian <laughs> right i'm going what and, and, and I look at the sheet and everybody on there was actors except me, everybody oh. else. So there were Americans being portrayed by everybody was Australian. And then I, I had to ask, I, I whispered, I grabbed some, I go, why am I here? Exactly. <laughs> I go, you could have just pretended to be a flat earther. Just grab some, anybody pretend to be a dumb flat earther. It's like, oh, the owners, they, they wanted to meet you. And I'm going, what? And sure enough, the owners. There are a couple couple of the people, the high high ranking execs that were um, part of Team Flat. So it's like, but they want really quietly. And it's like, yeah, nice. To we didn't even go out to dinner. That was the weird part. They just shook my hand. You know, it was one of those feathers in their cap. It's like, oh yeah, we helped Mark out and helped the whole community out. It was like, wow, it's so weird. <laughs> anyway, well, Songman, is there anything you'd like to say before we let you go? Oh, well, it's just a pleasure to make a debut because Mark, I got. To- to talk to you and you're welcome i gave you a song to make you go woo 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 and i'm sure <laughs> when i hang up this is gonna make james go yibbity dabbity do because mark i'm so glad i invited you because this show was a big yahoo wow <laughs> hey before before you go real quick where are you i'm in rhode island oh okay okay i was yeah. worried 
the small one now, fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I can in and out. You never know. James always gets me on. So I can in and out be on every month or so. Well, nice. You know, Nice. It, it was tough for me to place the accent. I was like, oh, where, "Where's that from? Rhode Island?" I, I, I don't think yeah. I've ever actually been to Rhode Island. Believe it or not. Yeah, I know. I hear you. Well, you have no idea how many people don't come here. <laughs> 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 and I mean, one more thing. You said you were going to the Oktoberfest, right? That was your but goal. I am. I am going to definitely try. I, I think it'll actually happen. Yeah. Well, before I leave, this is the you know, James, do a favor for me and send him a big Federal Express because I know for sure this is going to help him get to October fast because, you know, for sure he's the best. And I'm sure he's going to be better whoever's the next guest because, you know, he's always the best. And I'm <laughs> sure he's going to say, OK, 23. What's my goal next? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Slugman, it's great to have you. Awesome, thank you for that. Yeah. That's really oh, cool. A problem. I would hope to have you back on soon. I can get you in on this because James invites me. And just so you know, just good luck in the new year. And I'll make sure I get you on for another rap to cheer in your <sighs> ear. <laughs> thank you. That is so kind. That is awesome. No one is, I have done, I, I don't know how many interviews, a lot. And I have never, I have never had anyone do that. That is really, really cool. So thank you. <laughs> well, we have a very special guest joining us right now. Oh boy! From <laughs> CMT's reality show Dallas Cowboys making the team and CBS's Big Brother Twenty One, it's the Yellow Rose of Texas, Cat Dunn. Jason, you can't just like introduce me with like the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader intro. <laughs> And then uh -huh. I show like this. I'm not used to videos. <laughs> I'm wearing a Bucky's sweatshirt. Oh, I was not prepared for that intro. But it, but it is I, the Yellow Rose of Texas. I'm here. By the way, I have not been told. That, that, thank you, Jason. I have not been told about any people coming on at all. So this, this is a surprise. Yes. Hi. Well, to be, to be fair in the intro, I said there may be a surprise or two. What? But I, I also said I doubted it. Yes, and and how? Why do I have a feeling you didn't doubt Jason it at all? I didn't doubt it at all. Jason I, it thought was, I was just gonna ditch, even though we literally talked no, about no, it. No, 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 no. He was, was he was bluffing. Yeah, he, he was basically he was underselling it. It's like, oh, somebody yeah, might exactly. come on. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Whatever. What Song man was a last minute addition. So, but yeah, I've been waiting to hook you two up because Cat does a podcast called Conspire Away Bitches, uh -huh. and it's incredible. You'd be perfect for it, Mark. Conspire away, bitches. Yeah, we are, when I say we, I mean me. I am the podcast. We specialize in like aliens and stuff, huh? but huh? flat earthers, come one, come all. I love a good like flat earth argument. All right. But cool. I, no, I, I I'd be happy to talk, for talk about anything. Did you, I, already, way, did you already I, talk about flat earth? No, no, no we're I, pretty we much just getting started. warmed up. We, we talked like for like five minutes, like, oh, by the way, special guest. It's like, really? We just started. Um, <laughs> the uh, just, But for you, um, you know, if I do come on and do your thing, I think I was one of the few people that owned like the first nine seasons of Ancient Aliens on DVD. True I story. I wish I had my book with me. I have, the, I have the Ancient Aliens in the Bible book. Wow. My, nice. uh, my parents and my aunt especially are very disappointed in me for having that. <laughs> But I think it brings up a good point. And I was actually, I was talking about this to some friends the other day. Yeah. Um, I feel like it makes more sense. Actually, okay. Actually, that sounds really bad. I was going to say it makes more sense to the Bible. But then I was like, I'm about to get shot to hell. So <laughs> maybe, maybe I should reword how I said that. But, yeah, no, I no, no. I mean, but it makes a lot of good points. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, no, no, I'm a huge, before I was into the flat earth thing, uh, I was in call, living in Colorado for 20 years. And somebody turned me on to some British at the end of this weird conspiracy thing. He goes, he goes, you want to look at some weird stuff? He goes, get some night vision binoculars, start looking at the sky. And I'm going, that sounds like a wager. <laughs> so I went out and I shopped through a whole bunch of different night vision binoculars. And I'll be damned if the sky is not freaking crawling with stuff, just crawling with stuff. And I thought they were all satellites to begin with for like the first day. I was going, oh, this is so boring. That's what <laughs> they wanted satellite. And then they started moving around in weird things and going ballistic and making left hand and right hand turns and stopping for no apparent reason. And I'm going, what am I looking at up there? And then it occurred to me, it dawned on me after all the movies, because I'm older, after all the movies we've watched over the years, including Close Encounters, you know, back in the day, that 
UFOs work just fine when their lights are off. They're like cars, right? Car works just fine when you turn the headlights off. UFOs are the same way. In fact, the only reason I can even, that UFOs are, you know, get spotted is because they want to be seen. Most of the time, they just run silent. And it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely freaking brilliant. So I can, I can show you some wonderful videos. There's some great stuff out there. I love, so I actually think that I saw a UFO, like, this is like a couple of months ago now when I was yeah. in Joshua Tree, which is where like all the like paranormal stuff happens. Yeah. But um, I'm pretty sure that I saw a UFO and then I like, Googled it, like what I saw, because I think I was like getting probed by aliens because I didn't think to film it. So I was just like going off my memory and I was like, okay, like three, three disc thingies spinning or whatever. And I was not the only one that saw that over the course of like. You Were know, you the only one that was sober? <laughs> I was actually, I was dead sober at this time. Well, no, I have to ask because when anyone says they go to Joshua Tree, it's like, oh boy. No, no, well, yeah. that's not really, yeah, that's not really my scene. The only question like, well, is how, how much did they in, in, ingest <laughs> before they got to the no, tree? No, nothing. I was on a walk. That's I was literally right, on a walk. I gave you the yeah, benefit of the doubt. I said. I was the opposite of like that kind of. You were the Joshua designated movie. driver in, in that group. But no, but I was like, but yeah, but anyways, aliens are among us. But here's my question. How yeah. do you, how does that tie in with like flat, flat earth, earth beliefs? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Easily, easily. No, no. I, and again, what I was telling you earlier, I believe, do I think, think there's stuff flying up there that's not us? Yep, absolutely. All mm -hmm. day long. Do I think, the only difference is, do I think they're from Mars or Venus or Jupiter or something like that? No. No, no they're from they're from the 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 what's it called? I'm going blank, but it's in the ancient alien book. It's it will like, either uh, either it either interdimensional or subterranean. Oh, I, was, big... I was way off. Never mind. Oh, okay, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming up with a whole other planet. I was like, no, they're from the planet Nebula. Samsonite. <laughs> I was way off. <laughs> yeah. The uh, no no no. Um. Uh. Oh God, I just let you just threw my train of thought for a second there. Uh. What I believe is that the that most of the stuff that's flying around there, um, I'm a believer, you know, the Mahabharata and, and stuff like the you know the old ancient again they're called ancient aliens for a reason. I think they're just old versions of us. I think they're just remnants of older civilizations that are kind of like the 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 previous senior classes that just you know you don't have to go home but you got to get the hell out of here because we got a new class coming in. You know, whoever's on the surface, they are told not to mess with them. Um, the, the, the greatest, if, again, you're an ancient, you're an ancient aliens person. If you watch the series, you might remember this. The greatest sighting ancient or alien sighting ship thing was never, um, uh, Roswell or Aurora, Texas or anything like that. No, it was 1561 Germany, the Nuremberg event, which is just mind blowing. Look that up. If you get a chance, it is absolutely, I thought I probably, do you know, you've, you've heard of this thing? I'm oh, let me sure. let me tell you real quick. Let me is tell that, you really quick. Is that the thing about, or I might be thinking of time travel. Travel. I'm all, you know, my brain is like you don't you don't want to take a glimpse in my brain because it's a mess. No, not up. not the German. Yeah, it's probably like a. No, you know about the Viking there, ship. The what? The Viking ship, where like, but that was more like time travel than aliens. But it was no, like where this, like all of a sudden they like saw a Viking ship and then like. No, 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 no. This you know this. this no, no, I'll, I'll tell you again. You can look this up. 1561 Nuremberg event. I think Jason's looking it up right now. But right. what uh, what it was, it's just amazing. Where the like a beautiful April morning in Nuremberg, Germany in 1561, long before cameras, two opposing, I don't know, flying aircraft carriers show up over the city and start launching fighters. Of course, they didn't have any science fiction re references at the time, so they thought it was religious. And just start hammering on each other for a full hour not a cloud in the sky there was no sun dogs it wasn't a chilly morning i mean to and even though they didn't have cameras an hour is an amazing long time for an, a dog fight right yeah. and you're they're watching this they're having their toast toast and their schnitz and glue and they're just breaking out the sketchbooks and they're drawing the whole damn thing because they did have newspapers back then i mean the old style and the uh, they did a wood carving of oh sorry so the part that ancient aliens left out this is where it gets spooky so after an hour well, no, right hold well, on I don't like to listen to spooky things at night no 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 it's good this is good yeah I, mean, I was like I was like I don't want to be scared you're fine I don't you're fine this is in no and then a vampire show no I know, like, I it was a werewolf <laughs> no <laughs> it was the headless horseman no uh, a a single giant black angular ship pulled up between them and parked didn't launch anything. Those two scatter like the sharks and the jets from West Side Story and take off. And this thing hangs out for a while and then slowly kind of pulls away. 
And that just opens. And that was the part they left out of Ancient Aliens because that opens up a whole new line of credibility, which is like, okay, who are these guys, these two guys? Why were they fighting over a city, which was definitely against the rules, which is why I think the third shift showed up. Third shift shows up. It's like, okay, who were they? Were they the cops? Were they the UN? Who the oh, hell were these the guys? United Nations and aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but the oh, thing God. that threw me at the end was like, what they must, what I, my, my best guess is they must have found a blackout zone, meaning because the response time was ridiculous. I mean, if I shoot a gun out the window here, there's cops going to be here in five minutes. Yeah. These guys were fighting with military weapons for a full hour and it took, you know, it took that long for that ship to show up, but it was just blew my mind away. And again, look up the, the drawing on the newspaper because they drew the whole thing out. Just gorgeous. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. There you go. I know I was going to save that for your show, but now I can't. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I was going to say, so consider this a teaser because we got to talk on the Conspiratory Bitches podcast. I actually okay. have to I have to go because I have to go to an Amazon Live, not the you opposite of have, aliens. You don't have to lie to make friends. It's fine. I completely understand. <laughs> no, it's like, it's like on that note, crazy. I got to go. <laughs> no, what? What? <laughs> but, but, why did you invite her? I got to, I got to go do, um, my, you know, my, no, no, you just email me. Jay still put you in touch. I'd be, I'd be happy to yeah, love, I would love to talk to you. I think, yeah, I love it. I think you and I could probably talk for forever. Yes. I have so many questions, but okay. I'll let y'all do your thing. It was nice meeting you nice and meeting I can't you. wait to listen to this episode about, hopefully I'll talk about flat earth. I'm just assuming that y'all are. I don't but know. I know it, it, it depends if he brings, it, it might be just a, it might just be just a guest show. He might just be bringing in people, and then after like the fifth one, he'd be like, "Good night, everybody!" and roll credit. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. That that would actually be really funny. Yeah, I got roasted the last time I had him on and didn't ask enough flat Earth questions by people <laughs> who believe in flat Earth. Yeah, I'm which interested. Which I thought was funny because it's like, well, you guys already know this. I had him come on as a comedy podcast. This isn't like an educational. Flat thing. Earth is not comedy, so, Jason. It's very well, serious. I have found very that out. Serious. It's very serious. <laughs> Actually, we have very little either. comedy. But no, I've got, if you want to do any research before, and I've got 1,500 videos on my channels divided up into playlists. I don't have time for that. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'll, I'll, I'll watch like the top rating. You Gen Zers, you don't have any motivation. I love how you think I'm Gen Z. Thank you. You're, you're not? No, I'm a millennial. Holy smokes. I know. I mean, you look like you're like 24. Bless okay. you. I am, uh, but I'm 32. Wow. No. Right. Good, good uh -huh, for you. Uh -huh. Is that time travel? Good for you. You don't have city miles like I do. I'm lucky. By the way, I have met a time traveler, and I might be putting him in touch with you. We will see. Ooh, we. That's right. You know what? We should do this every night. We should. <laughs> same place tomorrow. But I do. I do gotta go because I have to. All right. Have to go. Have to go work. To go, you know. All right. Nice meeting. It was good you. seeing you. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye. All right. See ya. Oh, I really didn't right. like her. Thank you for getting rid of her. <laughs> did. I oh swear you guys, you guys could talk for hours. That and was, I would love to be there when you do. That she's was a lot of fun. Taxing. Oh, <laughs> seriously. Dodged a bullet there. Uh -oh. Okay. Anyway. Oh my God. <laughs> she's back. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Why, why was she back? <laughs> Oh, I saw her in the background and I thought it'd just be funny to throw her uh, back on the screen. Yeah, I don't, change my, I don't change my stance. No, I'm totally not doing her podcast. <laughs> she seems like like there's a big can of crazy happening there. No, I'm she is kidding. one of the no, most... no, she, seem, she seems lovely. Oh, yeah. Like, she's one great. of the most fun people I know. That's for sure. She's great. Well, cool. I, but... I, I have, I've done out of the 400, 500 podcasts, I've done maybe not even not even 50 uh were hosted by women wow really yeah, the conspiracy world tends to you know there's that dark side of the conspiracy world which which dwell in men dwell <laughs> you know they talk in low tones about the government and pretend that they're batman you know type stuff so yeah all right I, well, you don't ask me or do you have just somebody you just have somebody else lined up <laughs> No, I, I actually was surprised from all the people when we did that last show yeah. that really got on me for not asking more flat earth questions. All right. But at, at this point, I, you have put so much information out there that I can't imagine there's something I'm going to ask you where you're like, oh, shit. Well, no, an original question, that's pretty tough. Usually the people that come with, up with original questions are um, 
high schoolers, some university students, because they're just off in the weeds anyway. It's really weird stuff. You know, I I can't even think of the last original question, but I don't mind. No, I mean, repetition. I mean, come on. That's what, that's how you build stuff is, you, you know, you, and the, the key is not to change your answers. That's what I've been lucky about, which is, you know, the answer I give now is very, very similar to the answer I gave in 2015. Because, so because because everything on the internet sticks. So if you start changing your thing, your routine, mm -hmm. people will figure that out. I mean, nothing. They The internet hive mind finds everything. Absolutely yeah. freaking everything. Which is why Joe Rogan got beat up so badly in, in our circles. Because he was anti-NASA. Absolutely went after the moon landing. And then all of a sudden, he got a brand new show <laughs> on sci-fi. <laughs> it was called Joe Rogan Questions Everything. And in the very first episode, he apologized for everything bad he ever said about NASA. That's like, what the hell happened? <laughs> It's like, oh right, they bought you, and then, <laughs> then and then after that show failed, he was given a podcast, which is now, come on, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan has the biggest podcast in the world. Yeah, that makes no sense to me. No, no, it does not. <laughs> Look, I, I mean, no, no I'm not just some bandwagon hater. I never no, quite. No, no, I, no. He's myself, been in the but, entertainment you know. industry his whole life, but he hasn't exactly been a list at any level. Yeah, you know, he's never and, been and smart I, either, no matter how much people pretend he is. But uh, no, <laughs> I'll no, probably I mean, get a lot of hate for that. No, look, he is what he is. But I, I do love this. I do love that he keeps bringing up flat Earth to people because he had to guess because he can't endorse it because of who he is now. And heck, Alex Jones during um Alex Jones's um divorce trial, he was talking to people, and he was he he came out and said he goes, oh yeah, they got to Joe. But he asked for it. There's this wonderful clip of him on YouTube from years ago when he found out it was like news to him that the government will hire people to, you know, to to be used for in the entertainment industry. And he said straight to camera. I mean, not even close. He goes, look, if you're out there, call me. I will sell out my freaking mother. Now, of course, he was talking about, you know, the money. It's like, why not? I mean, the if you want to go back to that uh stanley kubrick um, you know can one i of the stop world's... you right there real quick the what can i stop you right there just for a second sure if you're out there call me <laughs> numbers at the bottom of the screen 929-266-wdhc that's 929-266-9342 i am waiting well that's just it i mean i'm your joe, next dumbass joe rogan in, jo in joe's case they <laughs> knew they had a certain demographic and they they worked it, uh, but no different than um, Stanley Kubrick back in the early 60s. You know, they, they were, you know, there weren't that many directors in the 1960s. And they went to him and the Hollywood industry. It's all about the money. It's like, you know, I they want uh, directors want unlimited funds for their project. That is their dream goal, whatever movie they're making. And they said, yeah, blank check. You can go up to five years to make this film, you know, to, to we we want you to figure out for us how to what the best way to fake space is on film and he came back and said can i like turn all these clips into like a story and make a movie out of it <laughs> like yeah just leave us out of it you know leave leave our names out of it turn it into a fiction piece and he's like right on i am so there and he did he took the five years and he made it in 1968 he released 2001 a space odyssey which to this day has aged better than just about any science fiction film ever i mean you put it up on blu-ray you can't even see the cropping it's just gorgeous i mean when like they're flying to the moon i'm going that is incredible what what he did in the 1960s uh so no selling out like it, people we don't like to admit it you know it's like look there are mainstream hollywood actors that initially back like remember during world war ii we we hired them to do pro american propaganda films you know, buy war bonds, you know, and do all this and, you know, for, for America. And now we're just more subtle about it. Now we just make the movies like, you know, when, um, oh God, when they hired, when Mel Gibson came out with, um, we were soldiers what about the Vietnam war, you know, it's kind of press forward any engagements we were doing overseas and, and movies like we're, actors will take the money. Actors are always desperate, you know, to, yeah. to take the money. Joe Rogan, no different. Sorry. I'm rambling. What, no, no, what, you're what, fine. What do you got? I I was just checking my phone to see if uh, anybody out there is trying to get a hold of me. Unfortunately, <laughs> doesn't seem like they care about no, me. No, don't be careful what you wish for. <laughs> well, Stanley Kubrick. There's a one a wonderful documentary. Excuse me. Um, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. A wonderful documentary out there called um, Room 237, which after Stanley Kubrick died and Blu-ray came out, the uh, there were people that came out and went frame by frame through The Shining fantastic documentary about basically he was so angry about how the the 2001 you know faking the moon stuff went that but he could because he couldn't tell anybody that he wrote his confession he built his confession encoded it into the the 1980 movie the shining because stanley kubrick did not do a lot of movies and they went through frame by frame and they said this is what this means and and they said they went through it and it absolutely made sense absolutely made complete sense uh, and it basically showed that it was a dream that turned into a nightmare because he realized at the end that, yeah, the money wasn't worth it in the end. Uh, no different than, um, I don't know how much movie fan you are, uh, Wag the Dog from the 90, late 90s. You remember that movie? Vaguely? I, heard, I, I don't watch a lot of movies. So. <laughs> That's right. It was a movie about the United States government hiring Hollywood to create a fake war in the, the an Eastern Bloc country. Kind of like your great, where they where they literally faked the entire team, and Dustin Hoffman was the director, and uh, um, Robert De Niro was the CIA op that was that was coordinating the whole thing. And at the end, there was this weird moment where Dustin Hoffman's like, "Yeah, we're gonna have to do a like a making of a documentary about this," you know. And and De Niro was so upset because it's like, even though it was kind of like a mockumentary. He was he was like he realized that Dustin Hoffman was never gonna get the director was never gonna keep his mouth shut. And so they you know, you knew that after the movie that that something something was gonna happen to him. And so they they tell you, they warn you. It's like, yeah, we're gonna hire you, but we, you know, in exchange for us taking care of you, you do exactly what we say. And yeah, uh, I, I'm fine with that because they say <laughs> money can't buy happiness, but I never seen anybody crying on a jet ski. There you go. That's a great yeah. line. I have used that one myself. It's true. Can't buy buy happiness, but certainly rent it for a while. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You ever see anyone just you know frowning on a jet ski? No, 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 not at all. No. So what else can I do for you? (laughs) I look. I'm just happy that um, I watched this morning a a debate. A very high-profile debate between one of our guys, uh, DITRH channel, uh, known as David Weiss, went against uh, a professional troll. The government hires trolls too, and this one goes by the name of Professor Dave. And I remember going on there this morning, and the 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 moderators said, "Oh yeah, we've got this really big YouTube channel, uh, you know, Professor Dave with you know almost two million followers." I'm going. What? what are you talking about? Two million followers. He's a troll just for flat earth. We 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 have a hard time getting, you know, breaking, you know, th- triple digits in a lot of cases. How is in the world he's get two million followers? And the chat room, you know, the chat rooms in YouTube, there were 900 people in that chat room, which is quite a bit for, for a chat room for a YouTube live stream. And all of them were flat earthers, all of them. And, and I had to call BS. I said, look, if this guy's got 2 million followers, there should be roughly 5,000 people in that chat room and they should all be him and they should just be spamming the hell out of this and, and just crushing us in the chat room. Never happened. There was nobody in there. And which leads to a whole nother, you know, thing that you can buy your numbers. If anyone out there listening, watch a wonderful documentary called Fake Famous. Brilliant. Yeah, Absolute. that is good. I yeah. do watch a lot of documentaries. If you want to ask me about a documentary, I can probably say yes. But oh, you, <laughs> you ask me about a movie. The, I don't know the, that the other that. one which I loved, uh, if you're in documentaries, was The Social Dilemma. I started to watch that, but... You uh, really should it finish was... it. it. It's okay. about the, the social media monster that was created. How all these different software companies basically created different pieces of, that became a Frankenstein that now consumes all. You know, it's like a Frankenstein Godzilla hybrid, which just goes out there and data mines everything and you it can be used to manipulate everybody. Um, to where we were mentioned in that at one point. Oh, I remember really? the the rough cut of that where there was uh they were talking to a programmer that was talking about why things are recommended for you and YouTube, right? And because there's only one guy that wrote that routine. And because they were looking for binge watch, binge worthy topics. And of all the thousands of topics that he could have brought up, he brought up one. And he said, well, if the average person that gets into flat earth watches 20 videos in a row, what do you think we're going to recommend to people? 
And yeah. what he's basically saying is you find what the trend is and then it's like recommended for you. Doesn't matter if you were searching for potato salad recipes or how to change the oil on your lawnmower. They're recommending flat earth videos to you, you know, at the bottom of the thing. And you're like, oh, that's interesting. You know, and yeah. and people kept clicking on those. And for three years, they uh, they were shamelessly promoting us on YouTube, just shamelessly. And yeah, see, where- I, I completely checked out of all social media. So I think that's Good why I didn't, I didn't watch it because I start watching. I'm like, yeah, social media is shit. That's why I'm not on it. And I just yeah. watch something else. Like but, YouTube is the biggest television network in the world and nobody talks about it. It's like something along the lines of 80 hours of content is put up every minute on YouTube. Wow. And that was five years ago when I came up with that stat, you know, 80 hours per minute, which means there are lifetimes, lifetimes of content you will never, ever see. Now, most of it is crap. At least yeah. I thought it was crap until TikTok came out and then YouTube started actually looking pretty good <laughs> because TikTok, they just, it's mostly just lip people, just lip syncing songs. I've never heard, seen so much music jammed into it. It's like, oh, I got a 60 second video. What am I going to do with it? Oh, I'm going to lip, lip sync to it or put music on top of anything. That's what it, all TikTok videos are. When people send them to me, it's like, oh God, this is horrible. I anyway. do have to recommend a documentary for everybody out there because it was crazy. It's called Wild Wild Country. Have you seen that? No. Um, I'm trying to get the woman who was in it on the show, but uh, not about? having much luck yet. It's about this group who may or may not be a cult. They don't like to be called that. Right. But they came here from India and they moved to some, I think it was Oklahoma, something like that. Yeah. And they bought like acres and acres of land and they went ahead and started their own little town and they basically just took over this little small area and then they took over the county and then they they had it out with some of the government officials. They bombed one of the buildings. Their end goal was to take over the state. Um, I mean, it, it was, you know, I've, I've seen I've this movie it. and it was called Waco, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was right. It was probably maybe a decade or two before that. I mean, it was incredible. They, they were trying to take over the town, but the way they were going to do it was by um, being elected into positions. But the only way they could really get elected is if they had the numbers. So they just started busing homeless people from all over the country to live there and they would just put them up in tents. I mean, it, it was really crazy. I mean, it doesn't I'd even say never heard real. of this. It's great. I'd it's never still heard up of this. I, I'm going to have to check it out. I, I'm fascinated by those anyway. I, you know, a lot of people in America, I mean, we don't know so much of our own history was that, um, you know, Utah tried to be its own country briefly, you know, in really? the 1800s and you know, they, yeah, the Latter-day Saints tried to break away. And the U.S. government was having none of it, but it took a lot more doing because it's the 1800s. You can't just fly out there and, and squash this. They had to march troops from D.C. You know, in the forts, and they had to march westward to to keep this from happening because they were going to declare um, secession. You know, not See, because that's... they were angry. It's like, no, 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 we think we just got this covered. We're just going to make Utah its own country. It. It's like, yeah, you're not breaking up the West like that. It's not going to happen. You're not Texas. And see, that's why I don't really watch a lot of um, movies and things like that, because there's so much real life stuff out there that's completely nuts and unbelievable. I'd rather hear that than something you just made up, you know? Right. Right, right, right. Yeah, Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there. There is. All right, what questions do you have for me? Do you have any questions? Well, I was was (laughs) waiting for somebody. uh, The podcast official weatherman was supposed to be here, but... uh, We're waiting on that guy. All right. Do hopefully... you have any questions? <laughs> well, do you have any anything oh. that's just kind of sticking out? So you, you had a... that? That's what? my doorbell. I think that might be our uh, our expert. If you want, uh, go ahead and promote your stuff. I'll be right back okay. when we grab the door. Okay, and... I will. All right. So, if anyone's listening to this and you want to know how to find my stuff. Uh, best way, because I'm, I'm not a huge fan of social media, believe it or not, because I just want to don't want to get stretched that thin. I put my stuff out on YouTube mostly. It, 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 yeah, if you find my stuff on any other whatever platform, it's probably put there by somebody else and I'm not maintaining it. I do maintain the one on YouTube. Just type in Flat Earth Mark 
it'll show up my channel. There's 1500 videos on it, but don't be intimidated by that. There's a bunch of playlists that are, everything's broken down by category. If you're new to the topic, I suggest a playlist called the flat earth shortlist for new people. That's really, really great. Or if you think you've already got kind of a good handle on it already, you can go to a playlist called flat earth, uh, tests and observations which is also excellent. There's also uh, subject ma testimony shows by subject matter experts where all sorts of people from various branches, all the branches of the military and pilots and engineers and air traffic controllers, I interviewed them all completely unsolicited. They called me up and said, hey, you know, you're not that crazy and here's why. And those, those are wonderful playlists. Um, what else? There's a couple of books on Amazon. Actually, there's three books now. There's two Flat Earth books, Flat Earth Clues and uh, Sky's the Limit and Flat Earth Clues into the World on Amazon in both print and audio format. There is also a survival guide on Amazon called uh, Empty Shelves. And it's also in audio format. And if you really don't want to buy it on Amazon, that's fine. I'll give it to you for free because, well, as you know, the end of the world is upon us. So uh, you can just email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net and I will send you the free PDF file of the uh, of the survival guide, which is what well, I wrote it after Katrina. If you guys are curious about this, like, wow, you're just cashing in because of the whole, you know, what's been happening lately. So no, I wrote this after Katrina. So it was quite a few years ago. And that's because when Katrina happened, there was all there was the whole city emptied the whole city evacuated from new orleans and only half of them came back and out of those people that came back almost most of them didn't even prep at all not even a can you know no bottled water no batteries no nothing it's like you were all chased out of the city <laughs> deliberately so what happened to the host of our show oh uh, he went outside to pee my name is dr fliegen farfik flogen I am an expert, yeah. Um, I am from the Germany. <laughs> the and, Germany? Yes, I am. I am very late because I probably should have thought of something quicker to change into. Um, I. <laughs> For those of you who are listening to the audio version of this, <laughs> it, it this appears to be the host of the show with a no, fake pose and sunglasses, uh, a trench coat. And a toque? Is that a toque hat? I don't know what we call it in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, you, you, you look like the cross between Albert Einstein and a, and a flasher. It's what oh, you thank look you. Like. <clears throat> um, Mark, Mark yes. I seem to have forgotten what I sound like. Could you do an impression of me while I gather my thoughts? <laughs> I I don't do German. I do I do Russian. And when I do Russian, people say I sound like Russian Dracula. So yeah, I think I remember what I sound like now. Um, <laughs> um, I I am an expert, and I want to show example. This this flat piece of paper. Flat piece this of paper. Yeah. This is that. what Mark thinks the world is like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I think his theory is trash. Oh, and you crumbled up into a ball. And this is what the world looks like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, <laughs> I just want to say that it was a pleasure. <clears throat> I my my mother is Irish, so if you if you oh she's Irish, is she? Yes, that's, that's why my accent saying. goes in and out. Sometimes I talk Irish, sometimes I am German. But it was very nice to meet you. I think you understand that the Earth is no longer flat due to my example. I am an expert. Everybody can believe me. And I will look forward to being social media man. And I have to say, our feet are saying, I am going to get out. I'm going to see if Jason is done peeing outside. And he will be back, yeah. And I'm going to go away. There's not enough room in this tiny little sardine can for the both of us. Yeah. Be a good so time to promote your stuff if Jason hasn't given you that oh, Okay, I will I will promote more of my stuff. Sure, why not? I'll, I'll feed her Zane. Okay, I'll feed her Zane. 
So while he's gone, and I don't even know if I'm on video when he does that. I think I'm I think I'm a black screen, but that's fine. <laughs> you have to. There's a couple questions. You know, I'm a big believer in plot holes. One, uh, why did uh, is Jason's bathrooms not work? That's kind of concerning to me. Uh, uh, two, the man in question, uh, his accent, he's slipping in and out of it. But even even then. Uh, the, the, the professor that I was just talking to from Germany, even he was more credible than, uh, professor Dave from the channel of the same name, professor Dave, uh, because that guy was just horrible. Hey, seriously, if you guys want to check it out, uh, go to channel D I T R H. You'll see some highlights or lowlights, depending on, on how you want to look at it. Because I have never heard, I mean, I have heard a lot of flash debates over the last seven years and I have never heard a guy go on the personal attack as quickly and as continuously. I mean, I don't know if it was a knee-jerk reaction. I don't know if he was nervous. I don't know if he just decided to go full atomic and hopefully he could rattle Dave into not presenting his arguments because he called him, I mean, again, it was only an hour long and he called him, the moderators might as well have not even been there. I mean, it was their channel, and it was probably good because the he, the guy showed his true colors. He used the word stupid, idiot, and moron so many times in that I thought it was a game show. Like, it's like, how many times could you say that in, in a certain span of time? And to where there were so many people in the comment section saying this is un, completely unwatchable because any debate person, any debate person will tell you that that's what you strive to make the other guy do. You know, to, to like lose his cool. It's like, you're an idiot. You're a moron, you know, and all this stuff. And the, this guy was did it in the first five minutes and he never stopped. And the moderators, any other show would have, any other podcast would have stepped in and said, look, no personal attacks. You have to, you have to be respectful of the other guy. So, hey, win for us. Great. If, if DITH, DITRH is listening, thumbs up. All right, I, I'm back. I don't know what the hell you said to that guy. He went running towards his car, babbling something about how he doesn't know what he sounds like anymore. That was, <laughs> by the that way, that was bizarre. You, I never met the man. This, I, I, I'm going to give you some some gold stars here, because yeah. not only have I not done, a, a, I've never been on a podcast where guests were brought on that I had no idea they were coming. <laughs> right, uh -huh. not just one, but two, including a, a crazy nine cat lady person that i think just put away her shopping cart and got on the mic and then to be followed by a professor who who, who went out of his way to disguise himself i no, he wasn't in disguise i got a good look well, at him face 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 for the because door. the guy first off his his nose was massive Absolutely. i know i didn't want to no, talk about I, that I, I well i didn't want to bring it up yeah, and his uh, eyebrows. People, yeah, it, oh you could yeah. Tell I mean, he was well, German. Well, I I thought he was being attacked by caterpillars because <laughs> there was just, there was fur all over the place. And I thought I just hope moving. he didn't make any Einstein references because that's kind of who he reminded me of. He he, you know what? A little bit, but only mm. when uh like a bad dinner theater tries to to imitate Einstein, something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, I you know, like when you're said, warming up the crowd for uh for guys and dolls. You got a guy coming out there doing Einstein jokes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What else you got on the docket? You're, <laughs> you're not even going to ask flat earth questions, are you? This is not, <laughs> you are just here to see I, if you throw out other things. I just brought you on because you're a great sport with a good sense of humor and you're a fun <laughs> guy to talk to. <laughs> well, you, you I gotta, do have one kinda, question. It's huh? This has been bugging me ever since you came on. There are a lot of letters behind you. What <laughs> is there a rhyme or reason why they're in the order they're in? Uh, well, actually, because that's not the alphabet. I've seen the alphabet. That ain't it. it. It's odd because when I choose the background for it, it because I, I have to do, you know, like this is Restream, but mm -hmm. there's other ones out there. You know, there's Google and there's Skype and there's... <sighs> There's just, I don't even know them all, but there's a lot out there. And so I just pick a background, whatever works. Like in this time, I, like I, there's a green screen behind me. And I didn't even know it was going to be. I This one is one of the default ones. This is uh, Flat Earth Clues Introduction by Mark Sargent. This particular. I see uh, it now. Yeah. Background. See, with, before it was just letters. But now I see what you. It's like one of those 
pictures that you can't see until your eyes unfocus. You know what I used to have? I used to have a physical vinyl banner behind me, which was a blown up license plate of my car, which said it's flat. But because of how the camera is set up and I couldn't get it that far away from me, um, people could only see like five letters and I was blocking one and a half of them. And it didn't make any sense to where people were giving me crap. And so finally, I just caved in and came up with different things. And then it's like, ah, you know what? I'm just going to buy a freaking green screen. Because I thought the I thought the pandemic would have slowed things down as far as interviews go. And like, it's like, ah, no one's going to call me. It's like, no, to keep going. Yeah, I think that's one one good thing about the pandemic is um, a lot of this kind of stuff happened, which is which is part of my uh, self sabotage. As soon as the pandemic happened and people started listening to more and more podcasts, I just went away. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm back that? now that it doesn't matter anymore. I I actually was uh, almost banned from YouTube. Believe it. Really? Or not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they changed. There's there's three things. You can't talk about on YouTube. Cannot talk about. Um, can't talk about false flags. And if anyone's like, what's a false flag? Look it up. Uh, you can't talk about the election from 2020. Can't talk about that, which I didn't care about anyway. I've never voted in my life. And you can't mention anything regarding medical misinformation. Now, beforehand, that was just the version of snake oil. So you can't come out and say, hey, I got this. I got this pill right here. And this pill, I know it looks like a chapstick, but I can work with what I got. Uh, and this pill clear cure everything that ails you. Everything from uh, hair regrowth to gout to uh, yellow toenails. You know, cure it all, right? And mm -hmm. Which is what they used to do back in the Old West. You know, they pull into town and sell usually a bottle of weird alcohol and they get everybody drunk and then take their money and, and leave before they figured out they wake up. It's like, my gout's still here. So... You weren't allowed to do that. And so, and I, I'll, I'll be ca careful what I say here. The, they, they made an amendment to that policy, which said you cannot contradict the CDC or the WHO in any way, shape, or form. And if you do, we will give you a guideline strike. If you don't know what those are, um, they're different from copyright strikes. You use somebody's music, they'll be like, eh, it's fine. You can't make any money off it. We'll get the nickels for it. And it's like, fine, don't care. But a guideline strike, that's almost, that's a, almost equivalent to hate speech. And if you get three of those, your account is gone. And all of a sudden I got on their radar because I was ranting and raving about all the lockdowns and everything that was happening. Mm -hmm. And they hit me with a strike. And then whatever reason they went through my back catalog and I'd been doing this like March of 2020. I mean, I jumped on this immediately and said, this is a bunch of crap. And they gave me 11 strikes in 72 hours. Wow. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I, I equate it to um, the henchman in the movie getting machine gunned. You know, you just empty the gun on him and you know he's going down, right? You don't even have to worry about him. You just move on. And then later, you know, just see him go over like a tree. That was me. I'm going, that's it. I'm done. It's over. Uh, that, the channel's gone. And then for some reason, the, uh, the social media gods granted mercy on me. And 90 days later, uh, the, someone who was helping me admin the channel contacted me and said, your channel's free and clear. It's like, what are you talking about? It's impossible. It couldn't even, that can't happen. And I wasn't going to press my luck. So, yeah. So, so I'm hoping, so you probably see I'm, I'm, I'm getting pretty close to hitting a hundred thousand finally, because mm -hmm. I don't buy subs, you know, like other people, professor Dave. And, um, uh, if it, if it happens, if you get a hundred thousand subs on YouTube, you, they, they send you a silver plaque. That's your first nice. silver plaque. And I, I want to get one of those before the world ends. I really would. Before, before you know, we all, before all of a sudden the, the saber rattling gets out of control. I'd love for, for that to happen. It sounds petty, but you know what? I have my petty side. Yeah. I, I don't blame you. I'd love to have 100,000 subscribers. So Well, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not exactly what you think because, you know, people, it depends your demographics. You know, it's all about like, like um, and plus you can't trust anybody anymore. I mean, yeah, the kids will jump on certain subs. Like, they'll sub to different music people. The part, the one that bugged me, you ever hear PewDiePie? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That guy, uh, he even fooled Hollywood producers at one point, which was when he got around, I think, 50, between 50 and 60 million subs, which is ridiculous, right? Yeah. It's ridiculous. He's a, he's a troll from Sweden. 
that makes videos about uh, uh, um, playing video games. In fact, I remember one of his really early ones back in the day where it was just him playing Minecraft, laughing hysterically at a Minecraft zombie being stuck in a tree. That was the video. And I was watching kids. They couldn't get enough of it. You know, I was like, what the hell? How old am I getting? And <laughs> It was, it was, I mean, they were in their twenties, you know, and, and, and he was getting millions and millions. But the thing was, he figured out one of the loopholes, which was some sort of production team got a hold of them because YouTube will pay you for hits and subs and stuff. They will send you a check, right? They'll, they'll pay you through Google. And he was taking that money and spending it overseas and buying more subs and hits, right? Which then in turn got him more money from Google and he'd circle back around and it became this cyclical thing. And but the thing is, when do you stop? Because eventually the numbers aren't going to make any sense, right? Yeah. When he got up around 60 million and Taylor Swift and Katy Perry were both sitting at 30, right? And he hadn't done anything, it looked a little suspicious. But then Hollywood came and it's like, oh, guy's got 60 million subs. We got to get him on television, right? So they bring mm -hmm. him over and they shoot a show called um, Let's Prank PewDiePie or something along those lines. And nobody watched it <laughs> at all, right? And they're like, what? I don't get it scratching their heads. What what happened? It's because there was the, the there was there were phantoms. There were no real subs. It's like and and I knew this later when he was oh god, when he was like 70 million. It just kept going, you know, he kept doing it. It wasn't gonna, so he goes back to Europe, he just keeps doing it. And he was on promoting, you know, the whole thing is to get sponsorship. And there was a gaming chair, you know, video game gaming chair company. And mm -hmm. he was trying to sell them and he was, he, he gave too much away. He said, he said, look, if I sell a hundred chairs, I get a price break. Right. And all of a sudden it's like, wait, dude, you have 70 million subs and you can't sell a hundred freaking chairs. Right. They're not yeah. even that expensive. It's not like you're selling cars. And even then I think you'd sell more than a hundred cars. <laughs> and yeah. And so, and which is why, again, the, you, you knew when you watched the documentary fake famous, it's not, it's not a, um, the, the line we'll take it to a bigger scope, which I love, which is, I think it's on Instagram on Instagram. There are mil, something like 10 million people on Instagram with at least a hundred thousand followers. Well, that, that, that's impossible. <laughs> like, there, there isn't, I mean, the, you gotta understand in the entertainment community, there's maybe 10,000 famous people in the world, right? Famous yeah. people, you know, even A listers, B listers, comedians, you know, you're, you know, even athletes. So you, you don't know. In fact, you, you try to make a list, you're not even gonna make it to a thousand people. 10,000 is being generous. So where are all the millions of people? It's like they're not real, they're fake. And they, again, there's, um, Sorry, I don't want to go off on a, a tangent. No, here. you're fine. Man. When I was down at a conference in New Zealand, I was talking to some kids and I mentioned they they mentioned they brought up PewDiePie to me. It's like, oh dude, he's so legit. He's so he's so legit, he's so real. And I and I look at him and I and I go, why? And they said, Well, because he's he's got like you know, at that point, I think 50 million subs. And I'm going, and it's like, well, he's got 50 million subs. That means he's absolutely, you know your the numbers create credibility and what i well, all of a sudden dawned on me it, which was posing a huge problem which is why you hire somebody like joe rogan which is these people the social media people just by buying their subs were becoming as credible as an anchor on a major news network that's been doing it for 20 years even more so right these kids would be like PewDiePie, i know him anderson cooper who the hell is that Right. And that's, you know, that's just one of many, many uh, examples. Well, everybody and, wants to go to the party with the most people, you know, you yeah, got 60 yeah, million yeah, that's subs. It, that's where it, people are going to go. There's a, yeah. And there's a thing when I can't remember what the threshold is, but I think, you know, we'll just round up to a million. It's the whole bandwagon thing, which is if you see somebody with a million subs, you watch the video. I'm skeptical. I'm cynical. I grew up in a time where, you know, commercials, we, we learned what was real and what was not and what was hype. And, but kids nowadays, they see it. It's like, oh, this video, if it's even mildly funny and they see a million subs, they're subbing to it because they don't want to be not sub to it. They, they want to be like, well, wow, there's a million, you, you know, the old joke your mother would tell you. It's like, if a million people jumped off a bridge, would you go with them? 
well, now we know, yeah, there's a lot of people that absolutely Yeah, I, w- I always said if they said it was cool, hell yeah, I'd jump. Yeah, yeah, you're 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 jumping. I mean, look at all the stupid um challenges that are out there. Whatever. TikTok challenge. If I have to see one or more of those, you know, where they're doing absolutely stupid. So why are you doing it? It's because there's all these people doing it. Like, oh so when so when um when Logan Paul, one of the social media influencer guys that he showed up at our Denver conference to to try to punk us. And it was so frustrating for me. I walked out. I did not do my set. They even gave him the mic before, you know, he was he was going to go on stage before me. And, uh, and I'm really? just beating. Oh, yeah. And, and the reason was is because most of the people at the Flat Earth Conference were over the age of I don't know, at least 35, right? Maybe even 40. And his demographic skews junior high school, give or take. <laughs> that's, that's, that's his thing. And what was happening I, so i sat down with a bunch of the presenters i'm going look this guy can't be here i go we get you can't let this guy in here he's he's a he's a troll he's a social media troll and the i was so frustrated because nobody knew who he was i i was trying to tell him and i was one of the only piece, people that did the, did the research you know i just i ran into him i knew exactly who he was and his brother and uh, but nobody else did so they were like I'm sorry i just don't know him it's like you're gonna regret it you're gonna freaking regret it and they did and uh, and I left, and I didn't. Uh, and I, it took me months before I was vindicated. Months because it took him months. It took him months before he released his video, and he completely trolled us. But even the the con- the the promoter of the conference, he was telling me, no, no, he's he's legit. He's above board. He's gonna. It's gonna be a serious piece. I'm going. Logan Paul's never done a serious thing in his life, <laughs> ever. You know, it that you you might as well be asking the team of jackass <laughs> to do a serious documentary. It's not going to happen. As much as they want to, it's not going to happen. Multiply that by social media on crack. Anyway. <laughs> um, are you... that's, that's in the book, by the way, <laughs> which you, you're holding. Um, yeah, right here. Flat Earth Clues. I was going to bring that up because we're going to be doing a contest. It's really easy to enter. All you have to do is show a little bit of love for the show. Um, there's multiple ways to enter. Just send me a screenshot of you subscribing on YouTube, Twitch, liking the Facebook page, stuff like that. Each one of those things that you do, if you send me screenshots of, will get you a chance to enter in the drawing. And if you're already doing that, just send me a screenshot of what you've already done. And I will, um, I want to make sure people watching this that aren't live, um, have a chance. So, I'm going to keep that going until Tuesday, April 12th, and then I will announce the winner the following day on the show that will be coming up. So maybe, um, maybe I should enter. Maybe I should do a, um, just so you can officially get the flatter stuff in the books. Maybe mm-hmm. I should do a quick uh, um, five question summary of people say, what's, what's your five question? I'll, I'll tell you the story of, of other people. Have Are you it. talking to me? Yeah, I am talking to you. Oh, okay. No, I'm talking to a cat. She's messaging me off on another screen. <laughs> Shameless. Oh, my God. I mean, sending pictures during the interview is just distracting. Um, because she's in a, in a, like a full gorilla costume. I don't even. Oh, I, really? Yeah, it's weird. It's like, it wouldn't surprise me if she actually had one of those. She seems <laughs> a like a real person costume. that would be like, yeah, you, let's do this. Um, you know, the, the Kate Beckinsale from Underworld, you know, the, the, you know, the, the British actress. She's yeah. she apparently one of her quirky things because Hollywood people are just so weird. Um, is she brings a two person horse costume that you usually see at stupid conventions like Shriners conventions mm-hmm. when she's traveling? And she and another person will walk around the hotel in a two person horse costume. I like that. Actors, so weird. Um, anyway, yeah, so her should be friends. <laughs> <laughs> she is great. I, I will give you that. Um, so the, um, so let me, let me, let me hit you with the, the, a, a quick flat earth story, which will do a, it'll do oh, a story uh, real quick, you're doing the man. We've been waiting for, I can't talk about flat earth. Can I, <laughs> you're not, you're not <laughs> I even have banned it from the show. <laughs> this is the first time I have ever done a flat earth interview and been not allowed to talk <laughs> about flat earth. Thank you for that. That's great. <laughs> we have somebody waiting to join the show. Oh, Introducing boy. the world's most famous weatherman and YouTube sensation, Frankie McDonald. Frankie, how you doing, bud? Oh my god! 
Okay. Doing great so far. And the weather all across the eastern United States is going to be a lot of rain all across New York City on Thursday and Friday. It's going to turn colder once again. And it's going to bring more rain all across the eastern United States. and got extremely hot weather for California. They had some severe weather all across all across the uh, southern states. And they're bringing severe thunderstorms, chain lightning, real loud thunder, heavy downpours, large hail damage. Which they had large they had hail in Florida. And uh, breaking windshields and things like that, and tornado touchdown there in Florida as well, in Georgia and Alabama. It was really, really bad. As right now, it's going to bring really cold weather all across the western United States next week. Really warm weather in eastern United States next week as well. Uh, real quick, Frankie, I want to introduce you to my guest. His name is Mark Sargent. Have you uh, have you heard of Mark? I know you're into astrology and things like that. Wait, this is Mark. I'm doing this great is... so much. Yeah, this, this is, is live. A recording. This is they actually I'm sorry, they got the yeah. asteroid 2009 JF1 headed towards the Earth on May 6, 2022. It's going to bypass the Earth altogether. Well, that's good news. <laughs> We'd be in trouble if it didn't. Uh, Frankie, I want to introduce you to Mark. He's wondering if this is live right now. Can you say, hey, Mark Sargent, this is live? Hey, Mark Sargent, this is live. I'm doing great so far. <laughs> I'll be damned. I He's have a said, legend. I've, I actually know who this guy is. I have yeah. seen Frankie's stuff. He's famous. Yes, I have seen is. you in different yeah. forums, man. They, I can't believe you're here. That is awesome. Yeah, we're happy to have Frankie here. He's the uh, podcast official yeah. weatherman. He joins is, us every single week. That is and so Frankie's cool. been a part of the show since 2015. Where, 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 yes. where, where are you right now, Frankie? What city are you in? I'm by the Steel City in Sydney, Nova Scotia. I'm showing you the Steel City. I'll be damned. Nice. <laughs> that is so cool. Well, Frankie, um, <laughs> real quick, if you haven't heard of Mark, Mark is a uh, flat earth believer. Do you have any questions for Mark as far as flat earth goes? The earth is round. It's not flat. It's round. <laughs> and I would expect nothing less from Frankie on that one. All right, Frankie, how are you doing today, man? It looks like you've been having a good day. So You're out and about. I'm the same thing to find the presence of the United States and karaoke inside the Steel City just now. Oh, wow. I bet people love that. Do you mind giving us a little sample? Moving to the country, going to get a lot of peaches. Moving to the country, going to eat me a lot of peaches. Moving to the country, going to get a lot of peaches. Moving to the country, going to eat me a lot of peaches. Peaches come for a game. Therefore, they're by a man in a factory downtown. Really, two pages of every look out. All right, Frankie, that's awesome, man. It's good oh to see God. you. I'm glad you were able to make it. Oh, you made my week, man. You I think I may need week. to ask Thank Mark you, if he has a question for you. Uh yeah, Frankie, Frankie, how long have you been how long you've been doing um videos online? Since 2007, it's a video the scenery. Video is the scenery. I did the very first video of myself on December 16, 2009. Then June 2010, I did the very first video, fire video of myself. Severe earthquake warning for California September 2010. I made a Tosh.0 oh, season 2 episode 13 late June 2010. Back then, I did not know how to ignore haters and trolls back in the old days. I, I closed down my old YouTube channel, Flank99. It does. I opened up my new YouTube channel, Dogs, on June 13, 2011. Yeah, I've I yeah, I think I've seen you on Tosh. That is that is so great. That is, no, seriously, that, that is wonderful. I am so I thank you, thank you for coming on. I'm I'm just thrilled. And Frankie, I actually have a video that I want you to see. Maybe we can do a show this Friday, and I will show you a video. Well, actually, a couple of them of a fox that's been hanging around around my house. It actually yeah. walked up to my front door, and uh, two days later is in my back door. I think you'll enjoy yes. that. All right, Franco, is there anything you'd like to say before you go? My focus, be prepared. Frank don't got a life, weather, and everything. It was published by Nimbus Publishing in Halifax, Nova Scotia. My Twitter is at Frankie McD. My Facebook is Frankie McDown. My Instagram is Frankie McD1984. My Twitch is Frank Down1984. My Clapper is Frank Down1984. My TikTok is Frankie Down1984. My LinkedIn is Frankie McDowell. My Snapchat is Frankie A M A C D O N. And my YouTube channel is Dogs Wolves. Best of luck to you. I'm Frank Dell. You're listening. We don't have Cookies Radio Show. Have a great day, Frankie. Thanks, Frankie. Bye for now, guys. <laughs> oh All right. God. That was the podcast official weatherman, Frankie McDonald. Okay. Now, now mm -hmm. I am officially impressed. 
well, for for you. two reasons. One, I thought you were just. I thought it was. I thought it was clever enough that it was just a pre-recorded Frankie McDonald, but then it turns out to be live. That just is mind blowing to me because I have gone through a bunch of different forums and some of the regular forums. Of, I've seen him. I have seen yeah. him on different things, and and people throw him up there. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, here's a here's a Frankie sighting. It's like what. Yeah, they How? use a lot of his clips online, a lot of memes and things like that. Oh, he that's is the one meme. and only Frankie. We talk every single Sunday at 2 p.m. He's a great You're guy. You're kidding me. No, we've been talking every single Sunday at 2 p.m. for seven years now. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. That, I, that is amazing. Anyone that's listening to the audio version of this, Frankie McDonald, you got to look him up. That is just, I mean, he is, he's not old school internet, internet meme, like techno Viking or Homestar Runner or anything, mm -hmm. but he's really good. That's he's awesome. a legend. Yeah, he is a legend. <laughs> well, Mark, is there anything that you'd like to say before you go? I want to thank you for being here. It was a lot of fun talking to you. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is the first time I brought somebody on while a guest was on the show and they were more impressed by the person who jumped on <laughs> than anything else. No, no, I mean, no, you, you, you kept Which it up. Or not. The, the first guy <clears throat> from, from Rhode Island was great. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I thought, I honestly thought he was from Germany for a while because his accent was completely throwing me. But then you bring on crazy cat lady and she was, I've never, it's like, wow. It's like, if I do a podcast with her, we may not stop. <laughs> because you can just tell, you know, the, the gears are there. We need are to there. set something up where me and you and her, her, we do something like that. Maybe once every other week, once a month, something like that on this sure. channel. I think that'd be a lot of fun. That would be a lot of fun. But then you 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 take it up another notch with Frankie McDonald, which was not a pre-record. It's actually freaking Frank. I mean, I would have been mm. happy with just the pre-record. Be like, <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Because he was doing a weather report. It's like, you know, like he does. And it's like, What? So it's just amazing. So yeah, no, thank you for that. And again, for no anyone, problem. anyone wants to find my stuff, um, just type in flat earth Mark or, uh, in YouTube or Google, you're going to find me somewhere. Uh, feel free. All my contact information is out there. My, my email, my phone number, physical address is in the body of every single video I make, because that's what you should do on the internet. It's just put out all your personal information. No, no, don't do that. That's terrible. <laughs> I, I do that because for whatever reason, if people don't abuse it. I don't know why. Uh, you know, I would have thought that somebody would have sent me, you know, but I get, I get these cool, <clears throat> sorry, cool packages in the mail. That's fun. So there you go. No, I know now. I'm All right. Frankie. Frankie. <laughs> well, it was great having you on and hopefully uh, I'll get up there where you are one day with almost a hundred thousand subs. And maybe you can tell your people to come over here. We got Frankie, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, um, just send send me the um the audio for this when when you're done, and I'll uh, I'll promote you. Sure. All right. Well, I appreciate yeah. it, and it was great yeah, having wait, you wait, on. Wait, always a, wait, fun sorry, wait, before before we go, mm -hmm. there was actually a couple of people that put something in the chat. Somebody said Joe Rogan is smarter than me. Uh, they said Joe Rogan is smarter than me because I said Joe Rogan is stupid, and then I told them to name one person who isn't. Mm. Yeah. So no, well, there's that. Touche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you no it was, it was an absolute pleasure and uh hard to believe you know how fast a year and god wow, has it's been like 14 14 15 months yeah 14 yeah. since we since we talked so no thank you this, this show has the most famous guest of any show no one's ever heard of <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's the, the, we don't have I, cookies promise before i go uh -huh. the name of the cat is mr kitty you're not making that up, are you? No, because he was just a stray. I did not want to get attached to him. Aww. And my kids started to. And I thought, we need to nip this in the bud. It's just Mr. Kitty. Aww. And seven years later, everything happened to me in 2015. <laughs> but uh, he's still here. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a cat person. I mean, I, I, dogs are fine. But I, I treat it kind of like um, the, the cartoon strip Garfield. You know, Odie... Odie's an idiot, but Garfield's the interesting one. Cats are just entertaining all day long. Well, fun fact, and since your address is out there, I might send you some. I actually grow my own catnip. I got, God, probably, I got a ton of plants. Yeah, I had send one, me some. 
I had I had enough one year. It just covered my entire kitchen table, and it was probably that high. And you, I mean, you was, wonder why why strays head your way? You wonder that. <laughs> <laughs> so Mister yeah. Kitty was just on his back in the yard. Oh man, the, this dude loves. It. I can't let him out though because uh, even though he used to be an outdoor cat, now that I'm attached to him, yeah. where I live, I have foxes and coyotes and everything Ooh, just walking yeah, through yeah, my yeah, yard. Yeah. So if yeah. I let him out, I'm I'm kind of afraid he won't come back yeah cats with foxes and coyotes they get chased around um raccoons are the ones you got to get worried worried about because they um uh cats have a hard time telling the difference you know between yeah, a cat I, and a raccoon they'll they'll mess you up i got about 30 of them that uh live in an old barn on my property and oh raccoons uh, yeah i i got everything there used to be a turkey that lived here really so yeah hmm. yeah i told somebody we were outside we were uh target practicing and I kept hearing this noise and my, my dad is a turkey hunter yeah. and I thought, damn, that sounds like a turkey. And I told somebody, I told my next door neighbor and he thought I was nuts. And then one day I come home from work and he's waiting on me and he said, you know what? I just want to let you know, I saw that turkey. It ran from my yard straight to your yard, right down the fence row. He's like, wow. I just wanted to make sure you know that I believe you now. <laughs> 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 nice. And I thought, you know, I didn't think you didn't believe me, you asshole. <laughs> this is completely unnecessary. And I kicked him out of my house. <laughs> nice. Nice. Very cool. Well, hey, it was it was an absolute thrill. And uh, whenever you need me, let me know. And I'm sure we'll talk again soon. All right. Sounds great, Mark. Thanks for being here. Really I, appreciate do I, it. Do I stay or do you, do you kill the do you kill it or do I do I blink away? Oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna do a, a quick outro and uh oh, okay. Be it, so all right. Well you have a great day, Mark. Thanks. All right, guys. I want to thank Mark, Cat Dunn, and Frankie McDonald for joining me. Also, John, the song man. Uh, next week, Wednesday, April 13th at 10 p.m., we will be doing this again. I will be talking to the first legally blind person to write, produce, direct, and star in their own feature film. From the Gold Coast of Australia, Guff will be on the show. I will also be talking to somebody I've never talked to before. And I got a feeling that we're all going to love him. It's somebody that uh, Frankie introduced me to. If you're one of the people who watched some of the uh, test streams I've been doing before today, uh, you'll know that Frankie got a hold of me while I was doing one of those streams, wanting me to join him and a friend. And I wasn't able to because I was doing this, but a rapping weatherman from Canada will be here as well. I will be doing a stream tomorrow night at 10 to talk about something that happened to me yesterday with some uh, Kirby vacuum salesman. That's a whole thing. That's why that's going to be on tomorrow. So if you haven't yet, please subscribe, give me a like, leave a comment, and I will tr I try to interact with everybody as much as I can. So if you want to leave me a voicemail, the number was on the screen the whole show, or you can send me an email, jason at we don't have cookies.com. And I want to thank everybody for joining me. I'll talk to you soon.